Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how I mount this orchid wall, how I remounted some of the orchids, how I've been not caring for them correctly in the past for 15 months in my rental home. And this is part two of a series of episodes that I'm going to do about me moving into these plants. It's going to be broken down by habitat. The first video before this, if you missed it, is about the entire process of moving into this house. And after this, we're going to talk about my green wall for aeroids and other other epiphytic plants and there's some landscaping up in the front yard as well. So stay tuned for all these episodes, they're quite interesting in my opinion. But without further ado, let's get started with this one right here. Alright, so here is the wall that we're working with. And there's this for orchids and also for air plants, which is today's episode focus. I have this IKEA wall, I don't even know what this is, like a wall board thing. And I'm gonna mount the orchids here and I also found this from Ikea. And these are going uh, two panels going up and this is continuously going up. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Five panels of these here. And there's actually three over there that are reserved for platysteriums. So yeah, some of the orchids are gonna be hung up here. Some of them are gonna be uh, sitting on this ledge over here. And then it's just gonna be very easy for me to care for them. I wanted to give them orchid fertilizer often. I don't wanna overwater them because they have actually been truly neglected in, in my old home because they were scattered everywhere. Some of them were actually mounted on trees. I don't even remember, I don't recognize most of these anymore. I don't rem remember having them through the years because I just sprayed them down whenever. There are some of them that are in trouble here on the table. And I'm going to be mounting these up so then they can be mounted. Uh, some of these are actually alive. I actually talked to Mr. Fahri from Fahri Orchid. He just said the best way to do it is probably just to mount them and then see what happens. And the more new growth should come up. These are probably overwatered. That's why they are so bare. And there's probably not enough light for them because they were leaving, living under a, a huge tree. And there was some huge aeroid leaf, I think, covering this at some point. So it was getting literally no light. But it's still pretty much alive. So I'm going to have to fix it. Some of them actually look good like this. I may actually leave it alone, but some of them I do want to mount them. So I'm going to show that in a bit. All right, so the most logical thing, I guess, is to start oh, start putting the, the ones on the ledge first. And these mounted ones, I will figure them out later. This is actually from Mr. Fahri Orchid. He gifted this to me. It says it's the Col Colonie Ponderada. This little one, this is actually from our Keiki. There's a Dishkidia hanging out here. I always leave the Dishkidia alone. This is the Keiki from our orchid video, I think, two years ago. So it's grown a little bit bigger, but it's got a lot of root rot before. Some of the roots actually, as you can see here, has, has probably dried off. I think this is probably neglect. Again, I just kept it behind some other plants and it was just not in the best shape, but it is still alive and hopefully it will start thriving here. But I think you need to water this because it's only in Lekka and it's such an open pot here. You do need to water them like at least once a day. You need to heavily miss this. I don't know where this is gonna go. Hang on, probably hanging low. This is my pride and joy. This is my one of my favorite orchids. It always flowers for me. So I'm gonna give this one really, really special care. But here's the problem. Where it was living before, it actually had a full, uh, not full, but it was a tree above it, but it wasn't against the wall. So if I put this against the wall, some of the leaves that were facing the wall will not be getting really good light at all. So I'm gonna move this shelf a little bit out and then maybe try to give it as much uh, light as I can away from the wall. This is a Hupertzia, you don't belong in this video. This is a Hoya, this is really beautiful actually. This is actually a Hoya Imbricata, but it's dormant, so it's pretty much dead. It stopped putting out vines, but this fern has really taken off. It's going to on that wall up there where I mount my second fern, I think. Doing all right. So apparently some of these old stems here, I don't, I don't think they're called stems. I'm not an orchid person, I don't know. But some of these can actually put out Cakeys, so I'm gonna keep them there for now. And there's a long vine here, so I'm going. This is the top portion, looks very dry. Yeah, I can just break it off. But I'm gonna leave that there. And there's these two Phalaenopsis orchids. They were actually rescued from rot before. Like a, like a lot of the leaves actually fell off and rotten off. But this has managed to survive, started putting out new leaves. I just put it on a terracotta pot with no media. And I just kind of water it. Oh my God, it's falling off. And I just, you know what? I'm just going to keep one like this and another one I'm going to mount. And this is a wild one right here. So it's got 
a fern living amongst it. So I'm gonna have to take off the fern because it's probably gonna be draining a lot of moisture from the plant. So I managed to free that one orchid from its fern roommate, a pesky roommate. Oh, this is a keiki. This is a keiki. Look at that. It's grown from this stem right here and this is actually a full new plant. Technically speaking, I could pluck this off and then uh, planted it right back down. But I'm not gonna do that today because the video is gonna end up being too long. And I have like 500 other plants to rescue. So I'm just gonna do whatever I can at this time. I do kind of like these square pots together like that. So yeah, let's see. I think that's it for my mounted ones. I guess this one is going back up on the table, on the shelf I mean, because I can use the table for something else, for our other genuses. And these are actually placed quite nicely here. I think the ladies who moved the plants here actually kind of styled them, so they look good already. I'm gonna just move this around a bit. Should have labeled all my orchids, but I don't. And that's probably a good idea to do it. This is a fern living with an orchid. I'm gonna leave that fern there. So, yeah, but the orchid is still alive. I don't know if I'm even in frame, but there's a bit of orchid material left here and some dried leaves. So this plant used to live under a tree that shed a lot of leaves and gave it too much shade. And I don't really, again, I fertilize it whenever I remember and I should actually care for them a little bit better. So this is bonsai wire and it's two millimeters and I have a wire cutter here, a plier, that I can just cut and then I can make a bendy, a bendy thing over here that I can mount orchids with. This is the easiest way to mount orchids and other plants. So I always have these rolls going around. So yeah, there you go. That's already one mount. I can't remember which side up it is. I think this is it's this side up. There was a orchid that I really liked, the Dendrobium anosmum, but someone came by the nursery and bought it. It was the last one and I figured why not? because I don't know, man, I have too many plants in my move, but I'm probably gonna get that orchid again at some point. Here is the one from Mr. Fahri. I'm gonna just make a weird ass shape. I'm gonna find like somewhere in the wood where I can stick it and then that's it. I'm placing them by feeling. I don't have any specific plan. This one's a little bit movie, moves moving too much tighten it up a bit. I think it's time to buy more orchids now. Now that I actually have a wall dedicated for them. It's looking nice. It's looking pretty good. And this one here with a cutie is growing off the side. This one already has a hole you can just poke through. Sorry, I'm not in frame sometimes. I'm new at this place so I don't know my angles yet. I promise things will get more uh, more organized at some point, but that day is not today. We really am scrambling to get everything, to get everything in their habitats. This one might actually go up, up higher. I'm actually to have secured this down. This is very, very loose. Let me see if I can get this all the way up and bend this up. It's not so bad. Okay, that'll do. All right, for this one, I'm gonna secure it down. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna MacGyver this thing. I'm just gonna create a little, what do you call it, even call it the crown, to just snap it in place. It's got a cakey growing on off the side, how cute. This one hasn't flowered for me yet. And this is very, very neglected. Yeah, so I'm just gonna clamp it down like that, right here. I hope this is the right side up. Mm, yeah, I think so. The flower is coming out this way. There's a little flower coming out. I might clamp this down too. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating this u-shaped thing with a little thing on the side with the ears on the side and i'm just going to clamp it down and let me try to reposition them a bit all right we've got some orchids here and i think this is some kind of vanda or a mini vanda orchid don't remember but it was in that pot over here and it broke as i was setting it free so i uh, have a lot of different mediums to work with i just bought these online these are actually meant for orchids they're very very inexpensive here in indonesia and I haven't figured out which ones to, to use. Look at that, that's just resting nicely over there. And then I'm gonna take some of this charcoal out. They love charcoal, by the way, orchids. 
because it's very, very antimicrobial. It drains really fast. And as an overwater, I'm really bad with my orchids. I tend to overwater them. So this way, they just kind of dry out very quickly between watering. But I couldn't find my pruning shears, so I'm using regular kitchen scissors, but these are recently sharpened. And I also ran it through the stove fire, so it's sterilized. But I think I want to cut the dead roots. I know I should cut the dead roots for all of them, even the ones that we did before, but I didn't really have the time to do it because some of this may actually turn into rot over time. They're not going to do anything for the plant. Uh, so yeah, this is my instinct telling me what to do. Tell me in the comment down section down below if this is wrong. But if you see any mushy parts, cut it off. Like give it the best chance of survival. Got some twine here. I really love mounting plants, by the way. It makes me happy because I think it may have to do with me having a fashion major <laughs> before this, a fashion career that is no longer something that I enjoy doing, but I guess it's something that you, that's ingrained in you for the rest of your life. This glove is not helping anyone. <laughs> Take this gloves off. It's like, I don't know why I even have them on for orchids. I was wearing it for another plant. I'm so sweaty in there. I think this is good. The only one tie, this is you know, maybe I need another one just right on the top. So this leaf will actually keep growing outwards and then it was gonna grow roots where the leaf used to be. So I need to keep that in mind. What I mean is like it's gonna keep growing upwards and then we're gonna lose the lower leaves and this stem is gonna continue sprouting the roots out of them. So yeah, be mindful of that. So when we water this, we will really wanna have every bit of the root wet, like having it drip with water. This is why I really love watering orchids. And then over time, it's just gonna be long and flowy, if you know what I mean. It's gonna be soft roots, like this one over here. This one is a healthier one because I know that I'm, I miss this down almost twice a day in its habitat. But this one was living in pot as dreadful. Look at how little roots it has compared to the one that was grown fully free, like hanging from a tree. But this is not getting enough light where it was before also. So it's like messy here. It's like my gas. It's like things are just not in order yet. My personal belongings are still in boxes. But the plants, they, they need to be safe first. They, they are my priority. And if it's not clear to you, it's actually nighttime now. And one of the best thing about this place is that it's fully indoors. So it's raining as well if you can hear drips of water. And I can now film day and night. I don't have to worry about the time of the day anymore because in my older rental home, like I'm really limited to filming and working with plants only in the daytime when there's daylight and, and I'm sheltered. I think it looks nice up there. I do need something to fill this out. Moving on down, I have this really beautiful bark and I think I know where to put it up there. I twist this around now because it's gonna be harder to twist once the orchids are up. And there's these two orchids. I don't know if I want to have them together. I don't, I kind of don't mind it. It might look interesting because in like botanical gardens and things like that, sometimes they're just put together and just next to each other. So yeah, I may actually do that. I may actually do that. And because I'm a heavy water, I'm not going to supplement this with any other moss or coco coir because I will miss this, but I think once or twice a day. Look at all these little roots it has here and a lot of them are actually dried out. It's probably rotten or dried off. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It really is, but this is still alive and it's hanging on to its dear life. Orchids actually really hate water. The care for the monster orchids are actually very, very similar. And once I, once I get the care down and things like that, I will do a full video about it but for now it's all about mounting and styling and having you share this moment with me in my new space this came right off what am i doing this came right off from there i have a feeling though i may actually need something to to give them a little bit more moisture retention do i I don't know, I'm such a heavy water. All right, I kind of like that they're kind of intertwined into each other. I don't mind it, but this one seems a little bit wonky. Once they have taken onto the media, if they've rooted into it, you can actually remove the hideous, uh, what do you call this, twines that I'm using now. And you can use other materials. So if you use like cotton twines, they do 
disintegrate over time on their own. So that's great. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'm really good with this. This is a beautiful, this is a beautiful one for sure. Yeah, I like them living together. Look at how nice. All right, so the space that I had in mind is right here. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Oh God, okay. Let me put this, stick this out a little bit more. All right. What do you think? This one is not doing well, hang on. Let me fix this one. It's not staying in place. Stay. Let me actually move this a little bit higher. Just one step higher. You know what? I cannot find a mount that will fit this size orchid. So I'm just going to reuse this media before for another orchid. There's some dead roots in there, but the media is probably still very good. There are some barks in there, some charcoal. Found some cold briskets, fresh new cold briskets. I don't know, this is not going to fit, but it looks so good in this pot. I really love having them sitting around in this pot. I don't want to break the roots, be a bit gentle. It's okay if some of the roots are hanging out, sticking out. It looks kind of good too. I'm done here. This is my last one. It's going to outgrow this at some point for sure, but I like it for now. I don't mind it at all. All right, so here is the final result. It is not perfect by any means. It's pretty far from being perfect. And I did move some of those over there because I wanted a more full look. And I guess I do have room for more orchids at some point. Here's a view from the bottom. And I have a feeling the view from the top is going to be pretty amazing too. There's a balcony up top, uh, emergency unit for my plants that are rehabbing. So I'm going to actually be kind of watering how I water them there. This is how I'm going to be watering them every day. And they actually do need to be fertilized very often. I would say about once a week or so in very, very diluted orchid fertilizer. They don't need a lot of pest control compared to the other plants like anthuriums and what else is very pest prone? Alocasias are very pest prone. And then they also will need a lot of antifungal spray because orchids are actually really, really prone to fungus infections. Now, there is actually a fan, I know it's super messy now. Everything's gonna be organized, I promise you, in the next two weeks or so, there is a fan that's going and it's gonna blow circulation over this whole area here because the top is actually covered. Rain is my number one killer in my previous home. This is why a lot of my orchids have suffered. So now I can control the moisture really, really well here. And I will have to miss them once, sometimes even twice a day, depending on the heat. But then again, they will have strong airflow blowing around. Orchids absolutely need good airflow. If it's still air like this, because I turned the fan off to film, but if it's still air right now, the whole day, it will really, really suffer. So the care for orchids is they like to dry out really, really fast. They actually do like humidity, but not as much as we think they do. If you live in a lower humidity place, you might want to mist the area around the roots maybe two, three times a day, they would actually love it, but not really the leaves. Don't try to miss your leaves if you are indoors or if you have poor airflow. For me, I actually have really good fan going. So this actually dry out in about five to 10 minutes. They actually love fertilizing very, very frequently because in nature, a lot of debris do fall on them, animal droppings, decaying matter. So they are, I wouldn't say not the heaviest feeder, but they do require good feet very frequently. And then they also very, bacteria and fungus prone. So you do want to be on top of your fungal sprays. Some neem oil will be very, very good for them as well. And I guess what else is there? I guess that's it for orchid care. Oh, and in terms of light, bright indirect light, there's your filtered uh, sheet over there that's filtering direct sunlight. So, and there's also an air conditioning going from the second corridor. Oh, I need to peel those blue tape off. But there's air conditioning going on there all day long. That is actually one room where I invested in a very expensive air conditioning that is very energy efficient because it's going to be on all day long. It's going to supply cool air to this area here and that's that fan as we mentioned earlier on. So this combination hopefully will keep the orchids alive. Stay tuned in my channel to find out if I'm right or not to see if I follow through with all these good practices. But meanwhile, I guess I'm going to let you go now so I can start tending on to my other plants. I can start filming other plants. Bye.